So good morning, everybody. Most of you know me. I'm Bernadette Abed. I work at the World Health Organization in the Neglected Tropical Diseases Division Department. And I'm so happy to be here. What a magnificent place to come to. I, I was in traffic, so that's why I'm a little shaky. Um, I'd like to also uh, say that um, I do have a wonderful new colleague. She came down like an angel. Katrin Bote works with me in WHO and has been supporting the UAR quite a lot. Um, we're very busy, and so she's taking on a lot of the, a lot of the load, really. So, and in fact, even my presentation, I will read it as we go. No. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we, I've been tasked to sort of look at the roadmap and see where we are and um, where we're going. Uh, you've already started that. Uh, as you know, and I'll go into it a little bit more details. I mean, COVID has sort of put a little bit of a of a break on our uh, on our progress. Really, we were we were actually moving and even looking at new funding opportunities. Um, but there is a great opportunity. Finally, One Health is being recognised, and um, and I think this is a great opportunity. So where we are now. We're meant to be scaling up. Um, I know there's a lot of effort from UAR. During even COVID, we were still very, very active. A lot of the groundwork is done. Now it's really to work in the countries to get the scale up. Uh, most of our rabies programs are actually pilots or little pro projects, but these could be scaled up. Their results could be highlighted. We could make the case much more strongly. So scale up, we're slow, but hopefully um, a new injection around One Health change in paradigm might help us move along. 2030, big challenge for us to reach zero deaths. That's our first task, right? We're not breaking transmission yet. We are far from that, but at least let's break um, transmission. Uh, let's break the, the, stop the human deaths and keep working towards um, the breaking of, of the transmission. Um, you all know, and you've heard already, United Against Rabies, and I'm so glad that PRP is sort of a, joining up with the UIR so that we put our forces together, defragment what we are doing, and really try to work towards common goals, maybe focusing on countries where we really think there could be, could be progress made rather than spreading ourselves too thin. Let's put our efforts together and let's try to move forward, um, oh, move forward a little bit more positively. So we had a young, wonderful young person, Deborah Nadal, and where's Katie? I can't see Katie Hampson, she's not here. Okay, didn't, oh, oh my God. Okay, never mind. Um, but anyway, Deborah was a PhD student with her, and um, she ran a, a survey and did a literature search around what COVID has done uh, to the rabies programs. We already were moving slowly, but of course, if COVID came, everything got reprogrammed, people, money, <laughs> and so things got even slower. Gavi um, halted everything except for COVAX. Still to this day, concentrations on COVAX. Good news is that we now have a contact and most of the people have changed. Um, so we have to build new, uh, new advocates within uh, the organization. I know Isabel, you're trying that very hard. I've, I have got the new contact who, who is really busy. They actually did um, hire someone to run the rabies um, rollout but that person was reprogrammed to uh, COVAX, COVAX, okay? But we don't lose hope. Apparently um, through our WHO uh, vac um, Department for Vaccines and Biologicals, um, they are also keeping up a little bit of the, the advocacy around trying to reignite other programs just beyond COVID. But at the moment, that's all I can offer you. We're hoping that by the end of the year, there will be progress. However, as I said, there have been positive things that COVID have brought to us. 
Um, and the, I think the, the biggest part is really the One Health uh, is becoming a much more familiar sound, not just among the veterinarians, but really um, among uh, the wider stakeholders. So we are um, happy about that. We also think that probably the workforce is now more capacitated to respond to infectious diseases like rabies. Um, and we're hoping that also the logistic improvements um, coming, for example, for the human vaccines will reach better to the primary healthcare services or, or other services so that the people reach the care that they need. Just quickly, I wanted to also put into, um, into sort of perspective what we're doing in WHO. UAR is all of us together trying to really target our 2030, but we are also motivating the sort of a newer stakeholder group, that's the NTD group, the Neglected Tropical Diseases Group, to really take on um, other diseases that they've been a little bit wary of before because it was just too too strange, too much, too, too, too complicated for them to sort of figure out. So we're trying to also advocate within our NTD group. We have launched a companion document to our roadmap. I didn't go into the roadmap um, discussion here, but we have a roadmap where rabies is one of the elimination diseases and has a target of 2030. Um, and with, with um, milestones like reaching the you know, dog population vaccination as part of the WHO targets as well. Um, we have also, as I said, COVID stopped us from meeting, but we did get on with a couple of things that I think are really powerful. We've created the One Health um, online course. Again, my group um, and you, every, many of you, Katinka, Gregorio, so many of you participated in this. Uh, but we at least brought out a, uh, a training um, a, a from you know, A to Z on rabies. We'll probably prepare one more since uh, Deborah is a so social anthropologist. We will also try to, to expand that part about um, engaging the communities a little bit more in a more innovative ways. Um, so that is something we have done and we are disseminating. It's one of the most visit, one of the well visited um, trainings online, and um, and it has actually been selected by WHO as one of the, the better trainings. So there you go. And it's all thanks to you for having reached that um, that goal this year, last yeah, early this year. Um, and one thing that I heard Shuncha as I scraped through the door. Um, one thing FAO had the Secretariat for the, 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 the tripartite, we are now quadripartite, FAO, OIE, UNEP, OIE, I can't say anymore. What do you say? Wow? Woa. I thought it was wow. It's also wow. <laughs> so excuse the wrong um, acronym there. But what, what we, we did was um, develop this, this action plan. And as Katinka mentioned already, that we're trying to build a framework for implementation around this. But what is really nice is that it's not going to just focus on the emerging diseases. Really, it's, it's really looking at it as a systemic approach. And truly, to really get One Health into, into um, our everyday, we're going to have to change our systems. And this will take time, right? This is not a quick fix. This is going to be a slow cook, uh, le creuset, uh, le co coquette, oh no, what do you say, la, 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 a la cocotte, a la cocotte, a slow cook. Um, but it is possible, and I think we've got now the, the, you know, at least we've got the enabling powers behind us perhaps to get this started. So rabies as well, um, our, our group in WHO was tasked with leading the drafting of the, of the, Action Act Track 3, which is around zoonotic diseases, endemic zoonotic diseases, um, and uh, vector-borne diseases. What else am I missing, Catherine? No, okay. So it's, uh, it's online. Uh, you can have these slides. It's online because it was presented at the World Health Assembly this year as a response to um, a request by member states to have the tripartite do something um, more 
um, powerful uh, around uh, you know um, being prepared and and responding to diseases. I just want to go back a little bit to the Gavi part, right? As, as we said, Gavi was not moving. Initially, Gavi had wanted WHO to lead the working group uh, on the rollout, on the rollout of implementation. So we didn't stop our forces. Again, many of you in the room who have contributed to this, it went online today. Uh, we have um, the guide to introducing human rabies vaccines in national immunization programs. Um, so that once Gavi kicks in, we actually have this, which links up all, you know, around everything on rolling out new vaccine into, a, into uh, the human health system. It does touch on the animal uh, interventions, but of course, this is very, very much directed to the human health, health, health systems. And um, again, it, it's a, it's a how-to document. It's not a guidance. It's a how-to um, and gives all the, all the direction to countries and national program offices how to start implementing the rollout of vaccines. So this will be one of the, and it will be my trigger to Gavi in the next few days to actually ask them, you know, where, where do we go with this? We have this now um, and Gavi will use it since Gavi is the sort of vaccines supporting um, institution, WHO provides the policy. So this is uh, around the policy setting for the rollout. Um, I just wanted to bring up one thing because as we were preparing for this working group, we were thinking of the OIE endorsement of rabies programs to be a sort of a criteria for countries to have access to the GAVI. However, we all know that there's a little hitch in this. Many countries find the $2,000 sort of investment to, to apply for the endorsement a big administrative problem. And I think for me, it's a call to action to you. Can we help countries to put together a dossier? And can we find some of the supporting funds that not OIE puts against this endorsement um, process, but that we can put against. And I have already tried to secure something for a few countries so that we can say, you know, uh, we'll pay OIE, you get your dossier done. We can, we can uh, leverage our great networks of experts to actually help you either to review or put the document together. But as we know, um, our data is really weak. That's really a place where we're going to have to put a bit more attention. I'm sorry, I'm going off my notes, right? I'm giving you my just, natural, um, but thanks, Katrin. <laughs> okay, um, so again, this is my big plea again. If we're working in countries to, um, to start building the programs, we've got some great work on the you know, strategic planning on templates for countries to use. We're a little bit not so great at actually um, bringing the, the sectors together at the moment. We've heard a lot about the the problems that some of the consultants had to put together strategies that are a one health strategy. And that again, should be something we are supporting those poor little consultants in a country like Sierra Leone, poor guy, you know, to put a strategic plan together. There's already so much barriers for them to put something like this together. Then bringing the, the, the confronting the different um, ministries together is not an easy task. We know that. Now, even you know, even WHO, FAO, and OIE. I hope you're not recording this, uh, but it's it's not easy to work across the sectors. So we need to be there to help these people to to really do the best job they can to when they have a strategy for the country to really build it with the other sectors. That's the only way we can can progress. So we're looking at really focusing in on supporting countries with surveillance. Again, you're here as key part partners, and I know, Tony, you're supporting a couple of countries um, to, to build the, the, their data, their surveillance, um, and not only laboratory, but really even start looking at that community aspect of, of building um, our data. It's so important, and we need to start not only 
the, the data for the implementation, but also to, for, to improve the reporting to the international organizations, FA, the OIE and WHO are the mandated organizations, so that we are looking, we can show the world, that's where people go, right? They go to our websites to see where are we at in implementing rabies elimination. And we need to do a better job of getting that data that is, again, so fragmented to the right people. So WHO, with help from many of you as well, um, Ryan's not here, but he's been quite involved in this, um, has been helping on, um, on um, not only a reporting system to WHO, but also WHO has a routine health information system uh, that is being built so that the countries are not just building different little apps and different little parts to a, a big, you know, all, all separate, but trying to build this routine health data um, information system to plug in the diseases and, and the care at the clinical level. So again, we've worked quite closely with CDC, not only to put in a, a data entry type of form, but to look at trying to empower the clinicians in uh, a better management of their patients. So helping with some algorithms around which vaccines, when, what's the schedule, um, what's your risk, you know. So it's something we're working on um, and we hope to launch this sometime this year. Um, but I do have another things on my list. Let's see. No. Okay, someone mentioned um, uh, Rinderpest and that's a great example. And we, we had Peter Roder on our One Health um, webinar, and he was rather contentious, but that's good. We can't always think we're the, doing the best thing and playing you know, our own violin. He, he really could be maybe someone who's um, not, he, he's, he's not always, let's say, uh, the most diplomatic or, but he has some food for thought to ruffle us up a little bit and say, how did we get the rinderpest um, eradication to its end? And, and, and I think there's a lot we can learn. He's available and perhaps he would be one to just participate with us in the United Against Rabies Forum. Um, I think that's all I have in my scribbles. <laughs>